What is up everyone, Movie Way and back again with another end of month vlog. This is just me talking about all the movies and TV shows that I watched in the month of February 2022. Some of these are on Blu-ray, some of them are cinema releases and some of them are from stream. And there's quite a few 2022 releases in here this month actually. So there's quite a few movies coming out that this month that I did want to watch and TV shows, which we'll get into in a minute. Now, I've just got to admit that last month I did miss two films off my January end of month vlog. I've only ever done that once with one movie in the two years I've been doing this. So to miss two is a bit of a head scratcher to me, but I'll briefly go over them <laughs> in just a minute there. Um, now, I've watched about 20 titles this month. I would like to watch more, but with my son who's like only five months old, it does limit sometimes some of the nights where you just can't get around to watching anything. But 20 titles still okay i feel so let's just get into it with the two that i missed from january there i do have the ipad in front of me if you see me looking down now and again i like to do these in one take but the first one that i'm gonna go over is batman the movie from 1966 on blu-ray now i did do a full spoiler review of this on the channel I wanted to start a Batman review series and I only got to two movies and it wasn't really gaining much traction really. But I will review these all eventually on the channel at some point, all the Batman franchise at some point. But I remember really liking this as a kid and I went and revisited it and it really did disappoint me. I mean, I got into it for about 20 minutes and then the comedy and stuff started to really grate on me there it started to become really annoying and frustrating to watch and every line of dialogue was trying to be way too comedic and i know it's a product of its time but for me it just wasn't working at all i know there's a lot of people who love this tv show and love this film and i do have a lot of respect for it because like i said this was the first sort of time we got batman on the tv screens and stuff it is a cartoon in live action form that's exactly what it is and it's definitely aimed for kids um but i just i just really did not like this film but if you want to check out my full thoughts for that that will be down below the other movie i watched was brazen on netflix the first release of 2022 that i didn't talk about last month this was a very very dull and boring film a crime thriller but some of the decisions that happened in this film i was just like that would not happen in real life like she writes novels and stuff and the police detective she writes crime novels and the, the police chief says yeah to her two detectives give her everything he, she wants to solve this crime instead of putting her faith in the two detectives just felt a little bit weird to me the characters were dull and boring the main protagonist the actress i forgot her name i'm really sorry was just really annoying and i guessed the end about tw what 25 minutes in as soon as i seen this person i just went yeah that's the killer right there so <laughs> it was just not a great start for 2022 but it did get a little bit better with some of the movies i watched this month so the next thing that i watched the first thing i watched in february was dead and buried this was sent to me by phil 4k baker so phil thank you so much for sending me this i finally got around to it and this was a pretty good 80s zombie type movie it's more of a cult basically well they are zombies really but it does act like a bit of a cult film and there's this town and when people get killed by this little cult they join the cult and start killing and the next victim and then they become a part of it like a chain reaction of events if you get me um there's some good kills in this uh pretty hard opening scene with someone getting burnt and stuff um, i think there was an eye kill as well i think there was a nurse putting a needle in an eye or something uh, it was a pretty decent film i like the practical effects and stuff i like dated practical effects they just work for me because it's part of the movie if you get me because i know it's a product of the 80s now, I do sound like I'm contradicting myself a little bit there with Batman, but that, that film just really did great on me. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, it was it was a decent little watch. Enjoyed it. So, Phil, thank you so much for sending me that. I'm happy to have it in my collection because I do like to own 80s horror films, no matter the budget or whatever. I like B-movie trash sometimes. Um, but this is a little bit more than that. You know, it's got a little bit more about it. So, thank you so much, Phil, for sending me that. Next up, we have another Blu-ray, believe it or not, Death Sentence. Now, I've seen this in CEX, and Cody Leach has recently done a James Wan ranking. He put this first above Saw and everything. And I remember watching half this film when I was younger, 
and I'd never got to the second part of it, I don't know why, but I really enjoyed this. Kevin Bacon just going on a little rampage here because his son is murdered by this gang and you have to kill a random stranger to be in this gang and unfortunately Kevin Bacon's son goes into a, I think it's a petrol station and it's just murdered by random and it, I felt really bad for the kid, I really did. And you really want Kevin Bacon to get his revenge, you do. Um, he's just like this normal family guy, really. Um, I, it was, it was, it had balls, put it that way. It pulled no punches, and it done exactly what I thought it would. It was a really, really good revenge film uh, that I do recommend. It's not James Wan's favorite, in my opinion, because that would be sore. And I probably prefer The Conjuring One too, but it's still a great film. It is. Uh, James Wan is a great director, and. It, you know, he, 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 done, he done really well with this one, I feel. Next up is a TV show that I streamed from Netflix, and that is The Woman in the House Across from the Girl in the Window. I hope I'm saying that correctly. The movie poster will be right there I'm, uh, on the screen now, and I don't know if I've said that right. I always forget the title and what all that it's in. It's a crazy title, isn't it? Let's be honest. Um, Kristen Bell was great in this. You know, I... I I, I just love her and everything. She's just so funny to me and stuff. But I didn't... This didn't know whether it wanted to be funny and a parody or if, whether it wanted to be serious. I was kind of thinking, just pick one. It sort of goes half and half there. Uh, you, you might be mistaken for thinking that it is a full parody from the title, but it did have a bit of a serious tone going for it. Basically, um, this guy moves in across the street. It does what it says on the tin. His wife is killed in the window. And she sort of thinks that he's done it and stuff. It's exactly what you think it'll be. It's like a long version of The Woman in the Window, which I did enjoy. I did. However, this had an ending that I didn't see coming in a million years. And I have to give kudos to this TV show for that. It took me way off. I just didn't see it coming in a million years. I really didn't. And if anyone guessed it, well done. <laughs> and... I give this 3 out of 5 on Letterboxd, I think it was pretty average, but it was a decent little watch, some of these episodes are like 20 minutes long, you can get through this in a few hours if you wanted to, there's only 8 episodes I think, was it 8? I think it might have been 8 episodes, yeah, but it's worth watching for Kristen Bell's performance there, she's just such a fun character, uh, a fun actress, and I like her in everything I see her in, she was good in this as well, so it was an okay TV show, a quick one to watch if you're looking for something to binge really quickly there. Next up is going to be, I think, my older release of the month. Yes, it is. Sorry, my newer release of the month. I do beg your pardon. Older release is coming in a minute. My new release of the month, Jackass Forever. I absolutely loved the Jackass as a kid. It was just... I always remember watching the wrestling on a Friday night and playing my PlayStation just before it and after it. And then watching Jackass in between because they had like two episodes on every Friday night. I just had such a fun time with that show. It was just really, really easy to watch and really fun. And I love the movies as well. So I was always going to go and see this. Some of the stunts they do in this. I really, you know, I, you know when Spider-Man No Way Home, the cinema was having an experience. It was like that with this, but in a different way. Because one minute everyone was laughing. And then the next minute everyone was going, ooh, <laughs> including myself. One moment with a pogo stick, I felt that, that really did go through me. Uh, one of the most painful, painful stunts that the, these guys have done. In fact, it's not even a stunt, is it, if you're getting hurt? So, <laughs> a really fun film. It is at number one at the moment on my Letterboxd 2022 ranking. Uh, I do think that could possibly change in March. Because there's a big film coming out, but who knows. Um, but up to now, this is my favourite film of the year. I really enjoyed it. I had a great time at the cinema with Jackass Forever. Next up is The Deeper You Dig. Now, I was expecting to really love this film because Arrow, every time these get these 2019, 2018, 2020 releases, everyone I've watched them has been great. And this was really good when it was kept simplified. This is about a young uh, a man who runs a young girl over on his way home, but he's been drinking. And he takes her home and buries her, basically. But he starts to see her and stuff, and he feels like she's coming into his life and you know taking over his mind and stuff. I won't say too much more, but the 
the girl's mum lives down the road and she's sort of investigating where this young her young girl has gone and sort of questions him and stuff at times and tries to get into his mind but there's a bit more to it than that it tries to be a little bit more clever than it should and i just enjoyed it when it was a, kept a little bit more simplified it's an okay film it's watchable but a little bit off in places if you like so that is the deeper you dig i've always wanted to watch that since i i seen that on hmv about eight months ago and never picked it up and I've, I've just been thinking of it since because i really do love that cover there I think it's the same cover underneath here, yeah, but uh, it's an okay little title from Arrow. Uh, next up is going to be my older pick of the month, and that is Batman. Uh, this is the other Batman movie I have fully reviewed on this channel. This is one of my most watched films of all time, one of my most favourite movies, and it didn't change on rewatch. I absolutely loved it. Um, Jack Nicholson as the Joker in this is underrated, I feel, because a lot of, not underrated, but a lot of people want to. Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix, probably rightly so, but he's up there in the conversation. He is great as the Joker, or slash Jack Napier in this. Michael Keaton is my favourite Batman. It's not the best Batman movie, in my opinion, but it's my most rewatchable, if you like. Uh, just Batman going up against the Joker in Gotham City. Tim Burton, it's probably my favourite film from him, to be honest. He just gets the whole look of Gotham right and everything. If you want to see my full spoiler talk review, which I did edit as best as to, to my ability at the moment because it's one of my favourite films and I wanted to give that re review a lot of respect. And that will be down below if you want to check it out. Next up is one of the worst films I watched this year, unfortunately, and I was really looking forward to this because of the person who stars in it, and that is A Violent Man. Uh, this stars Craig Fairbrass from the Rise of the Foot Soldier films who... For me, should be up there in Hollywood now and stuff. He is just a great actor. I don't care what anyone says. He's got this great screen presence. And he is basically a prisoner who's been there for like 20 years or whatever. I can't remember if he killed someone or something. And this new prisoner comes into his cell block. And he sort of teaches him the way of prison life and stuff. But this kid is spiraling out of control a little bit. And he sort of got a pick between seeing his daughter and controlling himself because I don't think they're going to let him see his daughter if he can't control himself because he's got a violent temper and stuff. <sighs> it was very boring. <laughs> it was. It was very boring. I didn't like the way it was directed either. All, most of it, in, the, in fact, nearly the whole film took place in the prison cell and it can work for films like that, but this, it didn't. It was just very, very dull. I really wanted to like it because of Craig Fairbrass and it's got that indie type you know, it's an indie film, independent film, but I just couldn't. I can't lie to you. I couldn't get into it. Um, I seen a letterbox review, and it said, "If you're, if you're suffering from insomnia, a violent but boring man will do the trick." And I think that review is pretty spot on. It, I, I, it did, it really did drag. It was just a bit dull. In all honesty, I don't recommend it, even if you love Craig Fairbrush. Next up is one of my other favourite films of the year up to now, and that is Uncharted with Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg. I am a fan of the games. Not a massive, massive fan, but I've played them all. I enjoy them. And this done the trick for me. It did. I thought Tom Holland was great as Nathan Drake. Mark Wahlberg was doing a lot of Mark Wahlberg stuff, but he was still fine for me. I loved the chemistry between them both. I thought they were both really funny. It just worked. I loved the way they bounced off each other. And there were some moments where I, you just have to suspend your belief. Especially one where he's climbing on a few crates that are hanging off a, a plane. It was way too far-fetched in some places. And some of the places where these clues and secrets and treasures are hidden. I was just thinking, wow, that's really not been found in like 500 years, really. <laughs> But there are things that make up for it. The third act and stuff is great. A lot of great action. Just a fun popcorn film. I mean, I didn't have too many problems with it. I went in, expected to enjoy it. Didn't expect a masterpiece. And I came out with exactly what I expected. So I've got a full review for Uncharted. If you want to check it out, that will be down below as well. Next up is a documentary on Amazon Prime. And this is Rooney. Um, I'm an Evertonian. So Rooney used to play for Everton twice, in fact, and he's the best footballer I've ever seen in an Everton shirt. 
and I've followed his career closely um, just because he's a player that really does fascinate me really yeah, I just thought he was an amazing footballer and I was jumped right into this the day it came out um, I actually watched it I think I actually might have watched it before I went to see Uncharted actually so I've probably got them two mixed up actually I watched half it went to see Uncharted they can come home and watch the rest that was it um, but this was a good documentary if, um, it does focus a lot on England instead of Manchester United slash Everton. It's more about England and the hopes that were pinned on him in the by the country and the press and stuff, pinning all their hopes on him. But it's a really good documentary. Uh, there's interviews with Colleen, his ex teammates and stuff. I won't go too much into this one because this is a movie channel and this is a football documentary. But uh, yeah, I recommend it if you if you're a football fan and you obviously know who the player Wayne Rooney is. I do recommend it. Next up is. I actually watched this on Disney Plus, but I do own it on Blu-ray here, so I will show it. Star Wars: A New Hope. This is a steel book, by the way. Um, with uh, the book of Boba Fett just coming out, and we have Obi Wan on the horizon. I've always felt that I don't love Star Wars as much as a lot of other people, and I want to. You know, I really do because I know how popular it is and stuff. I do enjoy Star Wars, but they're not some of the best films I've ever seen or nothing, in my opinion. But you thought, you know what, I'm going to give Star Wars an, a new hope, another go. This is the third or fourth time I've ever watched this movie, you know. And I really did enjoy it, I did, but I just have that same feeling from it. I gave it four out of five on Letterboxd, so I do think it's a good film. I, especially the middle part, the middle part of this is the best, where they're going to... Uh, Rescue Princess Leia. I loved all of that. That was perfect in my opinion. Um, it's the third act for me. I know a lot of people love that part, but for me it was just a little bit of a step back from the middle and the start, if you get me. Um, but overall, a really, really good film. I can see why it's loved. I can see it, especially at the time. Um, but great characters and stuff. It looks great, especially for the 1977 uh, great, well, really well directed film. It's just the third act a little bit for me. I know I, I might get flat for saying that in the comments. Fair enough. Uh, I do plan on watching The Empire Strike Back. In fact, I do plan on rewatching all these at some point. This is the only one I watch this month though. But I'm probably gonna watch The Empire Strikes Back as well because I want to be up to date and stuff when Obi Wan Kenobi comes out and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it, it, good movie, good movie. Star Wars: New Hope. Um, Next up was Moonfall. I actually went to cinema on my own to watch this because my fiance wasn't interested. Um, <sighs> I had fun with this movie, but the third act just went in a lot of stupid directions for me. Um, Samuel Tolley, I really am so sorry I forgot the guy who plays him. He was a great character in this film. He's the best thing about it, in my opinion. I did think from the trailer that he was going to be really annoying, but he is definitely the best part of the film. Um, but there was some... Like, I like disaster films and stuff, but they tried to put too much into it in that third act, and it did start to drag as well. It's 20 minutes too long, easily. But it's an interesting film. The comedy... Is a little bit too much as well for the type of film that it is. I mean, there's a disaster going on and people are telling jokes. <laughs> but Patrick Wilson was great in this as well, so was Hal Berry. I enjoyed it. It was a good little disaster film from Roland Emmerich, is it? Is it Roland Emmerich? I think it is. Um, but nothing amazing. It's watchable, put it that way. <laughs> uh, next up, we have... Creepshow, which was sent to me again in subscriber mail from my friend Carl from Carlini09. I'll leave his link to the channel, his channel down below. Um, I do own Creepshow 2, which I have watched, but I've never seen this one. And this one actually had five stories in it. Creepshow 2 only has three. And my favourite by far is the Leslie Nielsen story where he buries this guy in the sand and just keeps his head above the sand and the tides coming in i absolutely loved that story it was great um, but there's some other good ones here with the bugger man and stuff um there was another one i really liked as well stephen king finds some 
meteor that comes down from Earth and he touches it and starts turning into a plant and stuff. <laughs> um, yes, Stephen King's actually in this film. I really wish... Oh yeah, there was another one with a, a, a creature. Yeah, and he, he wanted to kill his wife. This guy and his way of doing it. We found this creature at work, I think, and he got it in a box and I think he was going to feed his wife to the creature because she's so annoying. I hated her. <laughs> But yeah, I thought, Carl, thanks so much for sending me this, mate. I'm glad to own this and Creep Show 2 in the collection. It was a decent movie. I, I enjoyed it. Next up is a streaming film. One of my second most anticipated film of the year. The first is The Batman, of course. This was Texas Chainsaw Massacre on Netflix. Me and my cousin work together. We're big fans of the, the franchise. And especially the first film and we were looking forward to this all week in work it's all we were talking about and we watched it on the same night and stuff and we were texting after it saying what did you think of this i i enjoyed it i did i know a lot of people hate this film but i've seen so many different views on it like a lot of people absolutely hate it and despise it and a lot of people loved it and i i give it three out of five on letterbox but i really did have a good time with it uh, I thought it was gory as hell. One of the most brutal and violent films I have seen in ages. They did get a bit of... It did try and be a bit like Michael Myers and Jason. And Leatherface isn't really like that to me. This is like a different Leatherface from the original film. Even though it's a direct sequel. So they did get a few things wrong, I will admit. But I've got a full review for this down below if you want to check that out. But I enjoyed it, I did, I had a good time with this, I'm definitely going to watch it again. It's only 1 hour and 20 minutes long and it was just a lot of fun, it really was. I, at the end then, I did not see that coming in a million years, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I, I was happy with the end product, I hope we get another one because everyone seemed to be talking about this movie, everyone on social media, Facebook, Twitter, people who don't even talk about films and stuff were watching it. So it was hugely popular. So hopefully we get a sequel. I would be right up for that. And there's a post credit scene in that which does sort of point towards it. So please bring another Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I love the what Netflix are bringing horror now. A lot more horror and slasher. Next up is Death on the Nile, which I thought I was really going to love. I did enjoy Murder on the Orient Express, but this one looked way more interesting to me. It just looked beautifully shot, which it was in places. Um, and all being in Egypt and on this cruise ship with all these great actors and actresses but this was really boring and dull yeah uh, I just did guess the end as well I was half an hour in I, I just said that's gonna be it said it to me fiance and she said yes I agree um, and it was <laughs> Kenneth Branagh really he directs some good films but in this he was really irritating me as an actor just mainly because he's up his own arse and some character even calls him out in the film and says I've never known someone who's so self-centred and like sort of up their own arse basically as you are and I was like yeah you're right <laughs> I really didn't like him as poor are. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly in this film I didn't he just really grated on me I don't know why he just because he was the same character as me the other audience express and he didn't annoy me in that film um it was okay, it was okay, but just a little bit dull in places, in fact in a lot of places. And a lot of great act, uh, cast members were underutilised, if you like. So yeah, disappointing really, because I was looking forward to it. So yeah, that's Death on the Nile. Next up we have a 4K, The Fifth Element. This is a film my dad used to tell me to watch all the time as a kid, and I just never fancied it. But as I get older, obviously, I'm intrigued to check it out, especially from the 90s, my favourite decade. I do have a video coming soon on my top 20 90s movies, so look out for that. This won't be in it, but <laughs> I, I thought this was okay. Um, a little bit dated in places. Good idea, good idea. Uh, it was really funny to me because this has taken place like 300 years in the future or something, and Will Smith... Uh, Bruce Willis just pulls out this cell phone, well, this telephone or cell phone, <laughs> cell phone, uh, mobile phone, that's the word I'm looking for, and it's like one of them you used to see like from 20 years ago when they first come out, <laughs> so I was just like, yeah, they got the future wrong here, <laughs> um, you can't blame them really, it's hard to predict the future, but I thought, uh, 
Gary Oldman was great in this. He was a great comic book type villain. It just shows you how much he can adapt to roles. He always plays a villain. At, well, he plays a villain a lot. But this was more comic book style. And I thought he'd done it really well. Um, it was okay. It was okay. I probably may need a rewatch to fully appreciate it, to be honest. Um, it was a good idea. Just an okay movie, in my opinion. I know a lot of people love it, but... Maybe I just watched it a little bit too late in life there. Next up is The Cuphead Show. Yes, this is based on one of my favourite modern video games, Cuphead. And this came out the same day as Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Another thing me and my cousin were talking about because he loves the game as well. And it was a really good show. I was sort of, I uh, don't know what to think about this. Is it going to be aimed at kids and adults? And it is aimed at kids, but adults can enjoy it as well. It was really funny. Really good humour in this. The animation is great, just like the video game. The stories, they're only like 15 minutes long, were fantastic. And I laughed my ass off in a lot of places. The voice acting from Mugman and Cuphead was just on point. I absolutely loved it, and I've heard we're getting it season two and three. So I'm all up for that. It does end on a cliffhanger. I wish Netflix would advertise this a lot more. I couldn't, eat. the day it come out, I was struggling to find it on Netflix and I had to manually search it. It should be on the front page, it's a new release. I don't know what they get up to there and how they decide to do all that uh, advertising and stuff. But yeah, Cuphead Show was great. Next up is a new pickup for me, The Girl on the Third Floor. I will show this again in my Blu-ray and 4K pickup video when I get round to it. Um, this is about a guy and a woman, a man and wife, sorry, who move into this house that has a bit of a history. And she hasn't moved in yet because she's away working and he's just doing lots of DIY in the house. And basically that's what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> All this guy done was DIY. <laughs> oh, this. There was some good moments going for it. Some decent little scary creepy moments but overall this film felt so cheap and dull and I, I know i keep saying about a few movies that are dull and depressing and boring this month but they really are i don't mean to repeat myself but that's kind of what i got off this and the performance of the main the main actor oh my god he was so bad i thought <laughs> he was just emotionless not a great film not a great film uh, yeah, I, I don't have much more to say in it because nothing much happened. The cover is what intrigued me, especially this nice little slip cover. I just blind by it. I went for a walk with my son. I take him for a walk every weekend on a Saturday and a Sunday. And we go for like an hour walk and I usually take him down to the shopping centre by my house. And there's a CX there. He goes to sleep the whole time anyway, so <laughs> I always pop in there somewhere to go and I picked this up and I thought I'm not walking out with nothing I'll pick this up yeah it wasn't great <laughs> next up is definitely the turkey of the month <laughs> I don't usually do turkeys of the month but this is definitely it and it could be turkey of the year Fistful of Vengeance on Netflix oh my shit this film was absolutely horrific it was terrible everything about it Apart from, apart from the fighting scenes, which made me give it one star out of five instead of a half a star out of five on Letterboxd, the fighting scenes were good. I mean, they used a the guy uh, from The Raid. Oh, I forgot his name. Ula, something. I forgot his name. He was great in the fighting scenes, but even he couldn't save this film. His character was so bored and stuff. But, oh my God, I hated all the characters. I hated the story. It was bit off more than it could chew. It was all over the place, an absolute mess. There's magic involved. It's kind of the worst version of Big Trouble in Little China that you can find. <laughs> it's absolutely, it, it was so bad. It really was. Um, the music as well, the soundtrack was terrible, but they played songs at certain scenes that just didn't match what was going on. It was only an hour and 30 minutes long and I just couldn't wait for it to end. It was so bad. It really was. And I was really looking forward to this because I thought, wow, that trailer looks cool. All these fight scenes and stuff. It was just so bad. It really was. It's basically about this woman who's a drug lord 
and she's sucking out the souls of people and stuff and getting stronger and commanding this art. I don't know. I don't even know. It was just a mess, honestly. It really was a horrific, a horrific movie. Not a, not in my top 10 worst of all time, but it probably might be the worst of the year. I'd be surprised if anything beat it. I really would, because it was just so bad. <laughs> Next up, and finally, is No Exit, which came to Disney+. Plus. Uh, I watched this last night. Yeah, I... I really got into this for the first half, and then it started to get a little bit frustrating, but this is basically about a girl who gets caught in a blizzard, and she has to sit in the centre for the blizzard to pass with these other five characters. And she goes outside to try and get some bars on her phone to get some signal because there's a certain part outside which will let you get signal she looks in someone's van who's in the in the customer care in the customer center one of them has a van outside she looks in the van and there's a girl tied up there so she's trying to figure out who it is and stuff um i forgot the main actress's name i'm really sorry but she was fantastic in this she was the best part of the movie for me but it did start to use a lot of traits in movies that like you see like people taking way too long to kill someone and doing a big speech other things that the script just started to become a little bit of a mess I tried one too many things the first half was really good the second half was okay but just fell rapidly as it went on if you get me i mean compared to the first part it was just not as good so that is no exit a film i was really looking forward to actually but there you go and that is it guys that is my end of month vlog everything i watched in the month of february have you seen any of these films do you agree do you disagree let me know down below i reply to you all i promise and please consider subscribing to this channel i will and giving it a like it would really help me out so thank you so much guys take it all easy i'll see you on the next video